Hey there, hoes. It's Dylan, your favorite fat cunt. Have you been? I'm so glad you guys like this audio only format. I love not having to shower to make content. Now that I know I'm not gonna have to put on my face for every video that I make, there's gonna be a lot more of them, trust and believe. Anyway, today we're not gonna be just spilling some tea. We're gonna be sipping the whole damn pot. This throat is made for guzzling. All right, my cup is filled. It's time to take a sip, bitches. Some comebacks are epic and everything the fans ever wanted, and some are not. Sometimes it's the song, sometimes it's the music video, sometimes it's both, but every group seems to have their bop eras and their flop eras, you know? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Girls' Generation, because that's the group I'm most passionate about, and why would I start off a series talking about anyone else besides my queens? I love GG more than life itself. Their existence has contributed to almost everything that has brought me happiness in this life, so when things don't work out in their favor, I take it very personally. And when things do work out in their favor, I also take it very personally. <laughs> On that note, let's start off with their best comeback, bitch. Let me set the scene. The year is 2011. Girls' Generation came back three times the previous year and dominated Japan earlier that same year. They decided that selling a million copies of a single album in Japan wasn't enough, no, no, no. They needed to wrap up the year with an official comeback in their homeland. And comeback they did. I'm talking about The Boys, obviously. The Boys was the first Korean comeback I experienced as a fool, so on. I'm talking like, I had all the albums, I knew all the freaking songs, I knew all the dances. Pink Blood was running through my veins, and it still is, to be frank. There was talk of Girls' Generation debuting in America around that time, and eventually it was announced that an English version of the song was also being released. The whole world was shook, and I was completely shook, 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 shooketh, bitch. The concept of the album visually was amazing, and definitely something new for the group as well. The visuals were less cutesy and more rich bitch. They were serving regal, I'm better than you, and we both know it, realness. Like I said earlier, at this point in my life, my entire existence was dedicated to GG. And this is where my whole opinion on this comeback gets a little bit personal, and why probably no era could ever compete in the history of, like, life. It was announced that GG, as well as everyone else, <laughs> would be coming to America, which if you didn't know, that's where I'm physically located. I'm sure you can imagine what was going on in my mind. Like, there was no question about it. I was going, even though I was, what, 16 at the time? I don't even know how old I was, but I was freaking going. So you'd think just the girls coming back was good enough, right? A new album, new live stages, and a new music video, that, that was enough for us, right? Wrong. Well, I mean, right, that would have been enough, but I was served even more. They didn't just serve me the expected three quarters meal. They served me the whole menu, bitch. Not only did everything I just mentioned happen, but I was also in attendance of the first and second ever live English performance of The Boys, and it was everything. Obviously, man. I think I actually still have footage of my reaction to being at SM Town, and if I do, I'll insert it here. <laughs> So that happened. Story time. So being in attendance of SM Town in New York City had to be the end of the glory, right? Like, there's no way it could get any better than that. Wrong. Right after SM Town, there was a Girls' Generation fan event organized by Soshified. Shout out to Soshified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but by the time that was announced, I already had my flight booked and I already had my hotel booked. We were able to change our flight, but we were too poor to afford another night in a hotel. So after attending the life-changing Girls' Generation, generation fan meet, we attempted to sleep on the floor of the airport. I say attempted because there was no actual sleep happening for me. I was with my mother and two friends, and they all were able to fall asleep somehow on the floor? Like, I, I don't get it. I literally just laid there. It's just kind of hilarious how I went from the undoubtedly two best moments of my life thus far. Oh my god, I forgot. No. Three. Three best moments. This story has layers, bitch. The night before, the night of SM Town, before the actual fan meet, I believe. I believe? Not sure, but I believe we were walking from SM Town back to our hotel. Actually, I think it was from a restaurant. We went directly to a restaurant after the concert, after a restaurant. Regardless, that's not important. What is important is where we were walking to. I don't know where it was, but on the way there. We walked right by Hyoyeon of Girls' Generation. Um, like next to her, like, you know, like we walked by. Like she was walking towards us and we were walking towards her. And, um, um... Uh, yeah. As she's walking towards us, I'm thinking, oh my god, is this Hyoyeon? Like, is this Hyoyeon? It, it is, isn't it? It's Hyoyeon. Yeah, she gets closer. Oh my god, bitch, this is Hyoyeon. What the fuck do I do? Not knowing what to do, all I did was just look at her, smile, wave, and say, Hyoyeon! She looked right in my eyes. She gave me the cutest little smile I've ever seen. She didn't say anything back. 
Um, <laughs> she didn't say anything back, but she definitely smiled and she looked happy. Um, <laughs> I of course wanted to follow her. <laughs> That sounds creepy. It is creepy. I wanted to follow her, um, but I didn't because I, I don't know. I'm proud of myself in that moment. I did not. I just tried to be a respectful fan and give her privacy, you know? It's just funny that I went from the three best moments of my life, SM Town, Girls' Generation fan meet, and then walking right by Hyoyeon and having a little cute moment with her where she definitely knew I existed in that moment, to sleeping on an airport floor, like with dirt and like germs and um, not a bed. And by sleep, I mean not sleeping. I mean laying down for about six hours doing nothing. Truly humbling moment. Also sip on this tea, bitches. Somehow, I don't understand. Somehow I was considered as a possible host for the Soshi Fight event. Like in an alternate universe, I was on stage with Gigi. It was seven years ago at this point, so I don't remember everything exactly, but I was contacted by Soshi Fight staff asking if I'd be interested in hosting that event and what my ideas would be for hosting. I of course said, yes, oh my god, yes, 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 yeah. But eventually I was told, hi, so after speaking with SM Entertainment staff, we've decided to go with someone with a bit more hosting experience. And honey, that was the right choice for everyone involved. I don't even want to imagine how I would have handled all that. Never hosting anything in my life before that and then having my first time hosting be for an event starring my favorite artist, like ever, I would have died. Like, I almost died just in the audience watching. I definitely would have died if I was hosting. But even personal feelings aside, I think The Boys was truly an event for any K-pop fan at the time. If you were there, you know. Case closed, next case! And a runner-up for best comeback for me would have to be the Lionheart era. There was a whole lot of, oh my god, what are they gonna do without Jessica? How is this gonna work? Jessica was a main vocalist. How are they gonna sound? Just so many questions like that, so many worries. But bitch, Gigi came back and pretty much matched, if not exceeded, all expectations for what they were capable of at that point. Not to mention Lionheart is their best Korean album and that's just how it is folks. If you have a problem with that, don't talk to me. Talk to Greenlight, Sign, Paradise, Fire Alarm, Talk Talk, Check, Bump It, You Think, I could go fucking on. The only dud on that album is Showgirls and that's just a poor remake of a Japanese song so does it really count? And the Japanese version of that song goes off so I don't know what happened with that Korean remake. At the end of the day, The Boys was a time to be alive, guys. The Boys was an era to remember but when we're brought up we've got to come back down so let's um let's talk about the worst let's talk about the worst era now i'm sorry we got to talk about the shit show that was mr mr let's set the scene the year is 2014 girls generation has once again been in japan for the past few years dropping nothing but quality bops they've been touring like crazy they're just raking in the dough they're just milking everything for all they can it's finally announced that a korean comeback was approaching we were all ready remember this was the group's follow-up to i got a boy possibly their most famous song after g of course so all eyes were still most definitely Definitely on GG, but y'all, this comeback was a mess. This was, this was not it. The concept, while unique, was definitely a step down from the boys and I got a boy, in my opinion. We went from queens who rule the whole damn world to really colorful and bright, more street style fashion. Um, and we ended up at, um, hospital garbs. Definitely unique, like I said, but like, why? But that would have been fine if the only weird thing about the comeback was the concept, then we can deal with that, right? Unfortunately, that was just the very, 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 very beginning. The concept, in comparison to all the other weird things about this comeback, is pretty much a non-issue. Like, you don't even think about the concept being an issue because of how horribly everything else went. There was drama. Shortly after it was announced that Girls' Generation was coming back, it was announced by YG that 21 would be coming back at the exact same time. And even even weirder and what made this whole thing suspicious, SM announced shortly before the music video was going to be released that it had to be delayed and re-edited because a good portion of the footage was lost. How does that even happen? I have no idea, but get this. After that announcement was made, YG announced that basically the same thing was happening with 21. I don't think there was a case of any actual technical difficulties with their video. They just said something like because of how ambitious the video was, it needed a few more minutes in the oven, I guess. Basically, just that it had to be delayed to ensure that it was like the best quality. This basically confirmed many fans' suspicions that YG planned this whole comeback 
around Girls' Generation. You see, at the time, 2 was really the only girl group that could compete with Girls' Generation in terms of sales and views, things like that. There were so many articles written about, oh my god, the two biggest girl groups are coming back at the same time. Who will end up on top? Who will win this battle? I was a fan of both groups, so I didn't care, honestly. But I do remember seeing my Twitter timeline being super petty, like all the time. At the end of the day, both songs went number one in Korea. Crush was more successful than Mr. Mr. outside of Korea, while Mr. Mr. was more successful than Crush in Korea. Both music videos basically had the same amount of views. There was no clear winner. But one thing's for sure, being a fan of either one of those groups at the time was fucking exhausting. But back to that music video that lost footage and was delayed. Uh, like, if you go back and watch that video now, in fact, do it, pause this, go watch Mr. Mr. and then compare it to any other one of their music videos as a group. Mr. Mr. is so unpolished and so clearly rushed, it is very obvious that SM really did somehow lose a bunch of footage. There's actually some behind the scenes footage that shows off some of those lost scenes, as well as some photos that show off some of the outfits from even more lost footage. And you know, the worst part of all this, Mr. Mr. is their best mini album musically. It's so good. Mr. Mr., Goodbye, Wait a Minute, and Soul are some of Girls' Generation's best songs ever. And the other two songs, one is called Back Hug, the other one is like Europa or something. Thing. Europa. <laughs> While not iconic, they were still very good. Just a solid EP from start to finish, which makes this whole mess of a comeback even more frustrating, especially as a fan. Did I mention that the entire album leaked on iTunes worldwide a week before the album's official release? No? Well, yeah, that happened. In conclusion, there's a lot of things that go into making a comeback great. It's a real balance of pleasing the fans you already have while trying to be different enough to make new fans. But like, it's also just about not losing music video footage, not leaking the album early, things like that. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Dylan's uh, show without a name. I I, I don't know what to call this. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and let me know if you'd like me to make a video similar to this, but with other artists. Thanks for tuning in and goodbye. Bitch. <laughs>